Let's clarify some goals. Most people say they want to lose weight when what they really want to lose is body fat. Okay? Losing weight is kind of easy, especially for those fad diet type things. Yeah, you lose a lot of weight because one thing, muscle weighs more than fat. So you lose a lot of your muscle on the wrong diet and the wrong exercise. See, uh, how many times have you seen people lose a substantial amount of weight, but they remain soft and doughy? They look like the same person, but they're just smaller. Uh, they probably followed a diet routine that robbed them of muscle. See, if you keep your muscle, then you keep your strength. And you keep something that you want, <laughs> that's useful. Because when you lose nothing but body fat and you keep all your strength, you feel like a superhero. Think about like a race car that's really powerful, but it's got a light, light chassis, okay? That's kind of what you want to do. You want to lose the body fat and keep the muscle. I'm going to explain to you, especially in the weeks to come, but you know, some on here, how you do that. It's a very delicate routine, one that you can screw up if you do not understand nutrition, weight control, and exercise, okay? So follow me. Here's the next part. There are three body types, ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph. Ectomorph are people who are generally very thin, very lean. Okay, you could probably see a lot of muscle, but these people want to gain muscle, gain size, and it's very difficult for them to do that. The second type is endomorph. Endomorph are people who are naturally bigger. They, they carry a lot of muscle with them, but it's hard for them to lose weight. Okay? And then the third is, like myself, I'm a mesomorph. I right in the middle. I'm like the porridge that Goldilocks ate. That was a ridiculous re reference, but I'm right in the middle. Okay, I'm to I'm a bit more of coming to get me. Okay, I'm a I'm a bit more of the endomorph than the ectomorph, but but as a meso metamorph, you're you can go either way, all right? So I can gain muscle probably easier than the others. And this is muscle you can see, because an endomorph can have far more muscle than me, you just can't see it. I want you to understand that. But here's the important part. As far as a workout routine or diet routine, you cannot use the same routine for an ectomorph than you would with an endomorph. You gotta know who you are, what body type you are, all right, so then you design your routine for your body type. Most of the endomorphs will have muscle and size. You just have to cut down the body fat that's surrounding it. So your your diet would consist of more more cardio, and there's certain manipulations that you can turn body fat into a fuel source. I'm going to explain the concept of cutting. Cutting is chiseling in, not building out. All right? Just like a block of clay, you start with a bigger block of clay and you chisel inward. So the cuts go in, not building out. I start with a bigger block of clay, which is the fat, and then I chisel in from that. See, I want you to look and compare these pictures of me. In which of these pictures am I the biggest? It's a mistake almost everyone makes. In fact, these pictures go from heaviest to lightest, okay? The one on the far left, I'm 240. The one on the right, I'm 210 pounds. Right now, I'm, I'm roughly 215, all right? So 
you think I'm bigger because you see the muscularity clearer. It's, it's just a matter of losing the fat around the muscle. But people swear, uh, you know, that I've been, you know, like chained to a gym. No, uh, I'm just revealing what's been underneath all the while. Everybody has a six pack. You just have to see it, okay? In those horrific pictures of people who are starving, you see what's underneath. And one thing to think about, a lot of people who are famished, you see, you know, skin, muscle, and you still see fat, a little pouch that they may have. Because fat is on your body to save you in case of famine. What I'm going to be teaching you is how you, you, you remove the fat so your body doesn't anticipate famine, so you keep the muscle, okay? It's how we feed our bodies. That's going to get a little tricky, but once you know it, you've got it for life. This part is about what I learned about how steroids work, all right? I have a lot of friends who were who are bodybuilders, uh, wrestlers, and power lifters, and, and doctors. So I became pretty obsessed with how a, a syringe of liquid or little pills could make somebody huge, like walk around at 275, 300 pounds from a little bit of liquid. And what I learned after reading up and asking questions, a lot of professionals, is that one reason why steroids worked is because of its anti-catabolic properties, which means steroids block cortisol, which is something that robbed muscle. Basically, it would take muscle and feed the body with that. It's, you know, it would eat up the muscle tissue. Um, but what steroids did was block that cortisol, all right? What happens is that your body and your muscles began to want, it, it allowed the muscles to build itself the way it wanted to. And when I learned this, okay, that the anti-catabolic properties kept the muscle growing and that steroid thing was stopping the process of the muscle being eaten up, I learned that if you had a positive amino acid balance, that means the protein, to feed the muscles to fight the catabolic uh, effect, that that muscle can, t can continue to build. That's what the deal is with all the protein stuff. Yeah, bodybuilders are going to a hum you know, humongous like rate of it but one of the one of the things was if i kept feeding my muscle it's it's kind of like this it's it works just like this like a bank account you never know when somebody's going to cash the check so having a positive account of protein it's called a positive amino acid pool in your body at all times means that when your body tries to replenish from the workout that you've damaged of the muscle and wants to rebuild, that check can be cashed any time. At two o'clock in the morning, one at p.m., any time. So you have to have a positive balance in your body so it can replenish it, right? The learning how the steroids worked in that situation taught me that basically what the steroids did was stop the collectors, the bill collectors, from coming and getting that muscle. Well, if it works for guys 300 pounds, all right, uh, as far as, well, I mean, I never wanted to be, you know, that big. It could work for everybody if you had a positive amino acid pool. We don't have to, we're not going to extremes like them. So 
for a smaller person, you, you, you can find exactly how much your body can build naturally. I found that I could get to about 230, uh, 230 pounds before, um, before I would start to lose, uh, lose my hardness, right? I'd be already kind of soft at 230, but anywhere from 230 up to 240, uh, then I would lose in quality. And, and for, for me to get over 230, with quality muscle, I would have had to have taken something that I wasn't willing to take. Besides, I already was too damn big for for martial arts at 2:30. I mean, everything starts to become a detriment above that weight for me. Also, as an actor, so I was already as an actor kind of too big for a lot of roles. So my sweet spot has always been right right where I am now about two between 215 and 220 uh, and even when I get down lower I get more lean but as I mentioned that makes me more susceptible to getting sick a lot of people uh, get confused and they think just because they can see muscles that you're on some kind of steroid that's that's far from the truth again I'm just revealing what's underneath. If I was big and smooth, you wouldn't say anything about some kind of steroid type of thing. See, another thing people get confused about, they say, oh, well, they, they think I look similar to a bodybuilder. I am a hundred pounds shy of <laughs> the weight I would need to be if I was a bodybuilder. When I say a hundred pounds, I'm serious. I'm six one and a half. Any bodybuilder who goes on stage would have to be about around 330 pounds in their off season and step on stage about 290 at my, my weight. I'm 100 in, I'm 215, 220. I, I'm fluctuating between there. That's how much off I am from being a bodybuilder. That's, that's it's very deceiving to people because they see muscle and they just think, Oh, you're, you're lifting weights a lot. I don't. I don't even do any stomach workout. I don't, because it's just there. I mean, I've done martial arts my whole life, but I'm not sitting around doing a lot of sit-ups or anything. Uh, a lot of people think that you do sit-ups to, to shrink your waist. It's not true. You can swell your waist doing sit-ups. I will do, sometimes I'll do contracting motions that, you know, uh, reduce the waste, but I don't even, when I, I do those when I think about them. I don't. I, I'm really uh, uh, kind of a nerd in certain cases. Never been drunk, never been high. Uh, on Universal Soldier, The Return, probably was uh, my leanest. I, I, I was about 208 during Universal Soldier, 208, 210 in some days. And, um, but actually I paid the price. I was, I was on a really unique diet. It was a 70% fat diet. I'll talk about that at some other time. But what I did was trick my body into losing all of its body fat. But it got me down to 3% and I got very, very sick. I caught the flu and um, at the end of the uh, shooting, I had to be rushed to the hospital where the doctor gave me a shot. And I asked him after, well, what was that? He said it was a steroid. And I said, oh no, <laughs> I've, I've gone my whole, my whole life without a steroid and now you, you shot me with one. He said, calm down. He, he started to explain to me that there are over a hundred types of steroids. And do you know that vitamin D is a steroid? Even asthma medicine, uh, birth control, these are all different types of steroids. I didn't know that. There's a lot, corticosteroids, there's a lot of these different types of things. So as soon as I heard the word steroid, I freaked out. And a lot of people freak out because they think they all are the same. They, they make you huge and all that type of stuff. And mind you, 
if someone is of, of you know older age, some of my age or older, and their their body is not regenerating anymore, um, I wouldn't hold that against anybody to to supplement with uh, testosterone stuff because it just makes sense. Something goes wrong with your eyes, you get eyeglasses. You don't just accept it. But right now, hey, I you know I luckily don't have to. I've never had it. A, a situation where I had to build muscle. I'm like a lot of people who if I wasn't in this this line of work I'd probably be walking around at 250 maybe with about 25 percent body fat like a lot of us are but what we ha what we do is just like a fighter you just you work and trim down from the, the body fat you just take the body fat off but the trick is how to keep the muscle, right? Like I mentioned before, positive amino acid balance, protein, keeping that in. That's why you always hear about protein, protein, protein. That's why there's three, you know, the meals three hours separate that keeps the protein going is that positive bank account that replenishes your muscles during exercise. Right now, I weigh less than I usually do because I've lost the body fat, right? So what I try to do, you might find this a little interesting, I try to remain uh, above 5% body fat because if you drop below 5%, you're susceptible to getting sick very easy. So for my immune system, I eat fattening things to keep a certain amount of body fat on my body so I don't get sick. So talk about eating anything, I pretty much do. Um, about three times a week, I eat, I sold food out, okay? See, I try to, I'm going to try to get you to the point where you understand how these nutrients work. Also, remember this adage. Abs are created at the dinner table, okay? The abs are already there, you just gotta take from what's around it, what's hiding it, to see them.